this is going to be an interesting video. You can see I'm here with Cousin It, who's giving me the side eye. <laughs> because um, Fernanda, not because of you, but Fernanda Nacimiento from Orchids and Succulents asked which ones of my orchids am I considering growing outdoors as opposed to the ones I keep harping on about having to come indoors during the colder nights. And Cousin It here is giving me the side eye because he stays outdoors and he's not well pleased. But Maxillaria variabilis can tolerate cold temperatures. They can also, some of them can go down to freezing. But um, my lowest temperatures, let's put it this way, that I am contemplating if I have a worst case scenario is five degrees Celsius. It doesn't have to get there, but I usually average around eight degrees or 10 degrees Celsius. But if I consider worst case scenario, then I have to think about these things as well because I grow with LECA in self-watering and whatever is in the pot, it'll always be a little bit cooler than the ambient air. So as much as I think I might have some that will tolerate my cold temperatures, it's the setup that has me concerned and I'm quite wary of how far can I push it with low temperatures. But anyhow, Maxillaria variabilis stays outside, much to his chagrin, because it's like, why? I want to be inside nice and cozy with everybody else. As does this Maxillaria down here, which I don't know what it is. It was sold to me as a tenofolia, but it's not. It has never bloomed for me, so I can't say what it is but it stays outside. It will not be down here in this kind of shady by the hedge location. It will be a little bit more protected inside my blooming alley because the temperatures there are a little bit more stable than being so exposed. Until I don't know what it is, at least I can protect it a little bit more by keeping it in the environment of my blooming alley. And in the opposite spectrum, Here's my east side for the time being. Everybody on this shelf is intermediate to warm growing. So that's my catacetums, that is all my cattleyas, all my brassavola crosses, my epidendrums. All these guys down here are the ones that I call my top guns because they can tolerate the most amount of heat, but that means they can't really to tolerate the cold. Epidendrums, Cattleyas, Brassavola crosses, Catacetums, when they go dormant, they all go inside. My Dendrobium berioda and my Nobili, they stay outside. They will get as much sun as they can during the daytime due to their positioning out here on that east facing table. And they stay outside, rain or not, they'll be absolutely fine. Even if something were to be considered for some kind of a dormancy, if my nobili gets wet, should it rain, I don't mind one bit. If it rains prolonged, then I will take it to the protected blooming alley area and let it dry out. But other than that, these two are already in their winter position where they get sun the moment it rises until about four in the afternoon, judging by the angle that we have now. It's just about 4.30 p.m and the sun is peaking around the corner of the building. Lots of light, as dry as possible, but in my setup, I always make sure that the LECA is somewhat moist, but they can take the cold temperatures, no problems whatsoever. Also staying outside are all my Rapiculus Lelias. They will not be out here in the area by the hedge. They will go on a shelf in my blooming alley they will tolerate the colder temperatures. They will be a little bit more protected though from the elements because I have as yet to get to know a few of them. They are new to my collection, some of which are extremely weak, doing okay, hanging in there, not looking hip, but I can see potential. So all my Rapiculus Lelias will stay outside. Let's have a look at the Neos. 
This is Neo-Phoenicia rainbow forest, so to speak. It stays outside. I've been babying it for the last two years. It's been doing really well, but let me take you to where it's going to live so you can understand why I'm keeping it outside this year. These van der racks here and at the far end are more protected. Yes, the temperatures can get down to eight degrees in this area as well, but they're a little bit more protected from any wind that could be too cold. The rainbow forest will live on one of these two racks. And that segues into my other Neo, which I hope you can see with the backlight, but it's up there, the one that we potted up. That Neo Phoenicia falcata that is going to live outside as well as it has done before, even though it is in Lekka, it will stay in my blooming alley setup right here, which is a lot more protected. I can put the curtains down. It doesn't protect from cold temperatures, but again, breeze, cold winds and such. It's perfect for them here. Lots of light because the angle of the sun is going to shine in directly. More outsiders. All the ones up here on this hanging rack from my polyanthum, my unicum, my anosmum, my Victoria regina, not my Wilsonii, that's a Phalaenopsis wilsonii, not my Brassavola, not my fabulous specimen of Hawiara, but my Sophronites will stay outside. So these three will move indoors when the nights get colder, but everything that is a dendrobium kind, the aphyllum, even the keikis, they will all be staying outside, including my tortile, which lives over here, doing really well. It has stopped growing. So we have the canes of this season full out, even the second canes, there's no more to come. Mealy bug magnet par excellence. It's every day now I'm watching it with mealy bugs. And every day I've got my paintbrush and my alcohol. But tor tortilla stays outside. The first time this year, I'm gonna do anything that has a zygo, zygo petalum, or in this case, zygonesia. They are going to stay outside for the first time as well. Zygonesia has not bloomed for me since I got it. And then it bloomed for me, but that wasn't because I did something right. That's because it was mature enough in perfect conditions and then it produced a spike, but not since then. So after all these years, it's gonna stay outside. The same goes for my Zygopetalum No ID, the commercial ones that you see. It's uh, coming back to form, to life. I thought I had lost it, but I have now got one, two, three. This is the growth for this year. Three substantial growth that I think are now capable enough to tolerate the outdoors. So I'm going to leave it outside and see what happens to it during the winter. I think it can handle it. And I feel that sometimes maybe these zygos or zygo crosses like the zygonesia they just don't tolerate my warm temperatures. So they are, this should be their season to come unto their own. But I don't have a spike for this one. As long as it's bulking up with new growth, eventually I'll get a spike, I hope. So keeping it in the cold might just be the trick to do that. This is Neo Stylus, Lou Sneary Blue. And because it has Neo in it, I am actually tempted to leave it outside over this coming winter. It never has been during the cold nights, it would come in, but I'm tempted because of the Neo aspect. I hesitate because of the stylus aspect. So one is a very hot grower, high humidity, and one can tolerate the cool temperatures. It makes it intermediate, but up to what degree? What is the bracket of intermediate that this will tolerate. I don't know. But as I'm standing here, the reason I'm showing this one is because the one we chopped off earlier in the year, 
I didn't want to show that for reasons, but now I might as well give it away because as I'm standing here, I'm seeing a spike. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. This is the first spike that this fan has ever had. And I have a lot of fans in here. They've done really well since they've been decapitated and the other piece was potted up into Lekka. And hey, I'm just going to say it now. It's got a spike as well. I wanted to just leave that as a surprise, but here we are. That is not something I was expecting. A spike is a spike. We're off to a good start. This piece is coming along with lots and lots of nice little fans growing everywhere. It's super healthy. The other one is as well. So I am contemplating leaving this one outside because it is not in Lekka and I can keep it drier even though it has the stylus in its parentage. The other one that is in Lekka will have to come inside and then we shall see how the two spikes develop, who goes faster, if there is any difference in speed whatsoever. All the Vendacious orchids will be inside. They have no business outside at this point. When the colder nights hit, that's not what they like at all. So any seedlings, any juveniles, anything that is a super hot grower, like also my Inobulbum over there, Munificum, everybody like that is coming inside and that is pretty much this shelf minus the Harpophila over there. Sologeny Pandorata, definitely inside. Staying outside, not by choice, but because of space issues, is my Pulmonara Masai Red, unfortunately. So that will always look a little bit chewed up because it is too cold for it at some times of the night and then you can see how it's struggling. But if I want this orchid, then this is the only way I can keep it. But it has its spot now for the rest of the year. And then when the spikes develop, we have to find another place for it because those spikes become far too tall for its location right now. And then I just keep hoping that the weather will warm up quickly enough for it to be moved. But for the time being, up until January, February, Colmenara Masai Red, this is its location. It gets nice warm sun when it is sunny. And very early in the morning when the sun comes up, it already warms up the leaves because of the angle of the sun. So I'm just hoping that uh, it will not go downhill simply because I'm stressing it out. It did well for the past years. Doesn't mean that it is a given that it'll always do well. We can have something really bad happen weather-wise, but um, yeah, this one stays where it is and it's a hope and pray and uh, please forgive me <laughs> kind of location. Also coming inside are all my epidendrums here, all the reed stem epidendrums. Can you see the color on that cane? Oh my goodness, isn't it gorgeous? That burgundy there. You can tell it's getting plenty of light from this angle, which is perfect for me. But right now, when the temperatures at night drop, they have to come inside. They are just gorgeous. I love, love that color on those canes and the leaves. It is huge. It's also gonna get bigger than what it was before. <laughs> yeah, you'll see where it lives. Maybe I have to make some adjustments inside as to its previous location, but that puzzle will come together bit by bit and I will be able to document that. So this shelf here on the right in my blooming alley is where I'm contemplating having my Rapiculus Lelias. It gets full sun in the mornings already for a couple of hours until the sun moves, which is great for them because they like to be in the direct sun, full light during the winter. So that this is one option. The other option is the middle shelf over there or the lower shelf. It'll be a test to see where the sun is the longest. For now, at this point in time, this location here on the right is the best for them. 
and all of the other ones will migrate over here once the temperatures drop. And in my case, it looks like it will be on Sunday. We are expecting some tremendous amount of rain come two, three days from now, but really tremendous amount of rain, which is going to be great for my Angracums and Vandacious orchids. But for the rest, it's going to be interesting to see how the night temperatures will hold out before I can move them in. The puzzle begins in my head come Sunday. So just as an add-on, I have a bit of backlight here. I hope you can see. All my telumnias are coming in. They come out during the days when it's warm, but they are going on a big like tray. And then every day I bring them in and every day I carry them out. And we haven't done very well this year with the telumnias. I'm not too pleased about a couple of them. And you can see there are some gaps because I have already moved the weak ones in. I just, I'm just not happy with them. And guess where they came from? Fill in the blank, it starts with S. Schwerter. This communal mount stays outside and lives in its location 365 slash 66 days a year. Doesn't move unless I film it or take it off to get a better light, better angle. This is where it lives and regardless of weather. Full sun in the morning, absolutely gets blasted with light. And then as you can see, even to the afternoon, late afternoon, every angle of this mount has full light. And all this row of beauties here, Stanhopia, Panaricas, and Graecum, Jomelia, and Plectromynthos caudatos, Didieri, all of them go inside, no exception. Space will be interesting with regards to my Stanhopias, but again, when I say they go inside, it's only for cold nights. And I can have a week, three weeks in a row, where they will come out during the day because it's nice and balmy, 20 degrees Celsius. The lowest it can be is 17. If it is sunny, they come outside because my microclimates are warmer than the ambient temperature. So it's a lot, a lot of an orchid shuffle going on for the coming four months. And I do get quite tired of it, to be honest. <laughs> But once they're outside and I can see them in the sun and yeah, then it's all worth it. But this whole row is indoors, definitely indoors. Because of size, unfortunately, my Chao Praia and my Papilionanthe, they stay outside. I try to move them into a little bit more protected uh, in the blooming alley. So the stand gets a little bit somewhat protected, but I can't accommodate it inside. It's just a shame. Not ideal. Maybe that's why the Chao Praia has never bloomed for me. Holco Glossum, Kimberlianum, stays outside until, uh, <laughs> until I get too scared and bring it in. <laughs> um, artwork and orchids. Brian, he has said that they can tolerate cold temperatures. And I, I took it down once to 12 degrees Celsius. And um, yeah, that was one night and then I got scared and I'm like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> but maybe that is why it hasn't bloomed yet because I haven't given it that cold drop for an extended period of time. So I'm thinking Blooming Alley might be just the ticket because it gets cold enough there it has space there it gets a lot of sun there but if I get nervous I can quickly grab it and bring it in I I mean I really want some Holko Gossum blooms one day I really do it's a beautiful orchid it fascinates me it's so funky looking but I have to say that I, I do get kind of scared because it doesn't make sense that something so spindly could live outside. I mean, the Rapiculus lalius, they are in media, you know? 
they are, I consider being in a pot a little bit more protected. And I, I don't know, I don't know why I have issues with this one. <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see. It will be for the longest period outside, but in the blooming alley. I love this orchid. I wish I could do it justice. So this was more like a little walk around tour, who goes in and who goes out. I thought of making it a little bit more static, making a list, showing the orchids, making a list, showing the orchids. But and then I just thought, well, that's so clinical. I figured walking around and showing things, talking about them. I hope you like the format. And with that being said, Twinkles go inside and all my summer bloomers, my Phalaenopsis summer bloomers go inside as well. And uh, normally I put the tray of the Tolumnias here because it's very breezy and if I have to water them, I need them to dry quite quickly and it does that in this area. Then I have another rack that I place the summer bloomers on, always by the hedge in this shady location so they get lots and lots of light but not direct sun. So twinkles, summer bloomers come in. The Schomburgias definitely come in. I may have already left it a little bit too long. We're now coming tonight at about 14 degrees Celsius, but the sun comes up quite hot and strong, so I'm still leaving them outside. I hope that this was somewhat interesting and easy to understand. I could have, like I said, made it a little bit more structured if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to elaborate further in the comments below. But I just wanted to give a quick idea of where my thoughts are. And I did this from memory, so guess what? When the puzzle is complete indoors, I will definitely do a tour and revisit and show if there's been any changes. <laughs> but in the meantime, this is what is in my head. This is what I remember from last year, with the exception of some of the maturer ones that can now stay outside, like my Neo Stylus Cross, which is an experiment. But other than that, this is sort of a brief breakdown of who is going to be in the orchid shuffle for the coming four months. I hope it clarified a few things. Thank you, Fernanda, for the request. I really appreciate it. I hope I did your question justice. If not, again, ask away. Thank you so very, very much. Everybody who clicked on this video for watching, I really appreciate it. The Phalaenopsis Yin's Black Eagle and myself. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Bye.